I'm just going through and doing the reading here for the citizenship, just the facts. And uh, as I'm doing this, it looks like I'm got a super black background behind me with the the light from the window. So if I do this, no better. But uh, it's like I'm a CIA confidential informant here. I can change my voice and you don't know who's speaking. It's like I'm a whistleblower for a secret. And I need to say something anonymously. It's Mr. Giving's hair makes me really jealous. I don't know who said that. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll workshop that joke. It's there. I just have to figure it out. So I'm going to go through the citizenship, just the facts reading. I'm going to start off right up here. Already a citizen. Citizenship means being a member of a country and having full rights and responsibilities under that country's law. Some people are born a United States citizen. People who are born with in the United States are automatically citizens at birth. So are people born outside the U.S. to parents who are both citizens. The rules can get a bit complicated for people born outside the U.S. who have only one citizen parent, but generally they're citizens at birth. Becoming a U.S. citizen. What if you weren't born in the U.S. and neither of your parents are U.S. citizens? You can still become a citizen through the process of naturalization. To qualify, applicants must have at least 18 years of age and have been permanent residents of the United States for five years. There is one shortcut, however. People who serve in the U.S. military for at least one year can become citizens sooner because they have demonstrated their commitment to the United States. Applicants must also have good character, speak English, and pass a civics test in an interview. As a final step, they must take an oath of allegiance, swearing loyalty to the United States and our Constitution. And we will look at that oath of allegiance a little later. Allegiance. Citizens owe it. Gotta scroll down. People who go through the naturalization process aren't the only ones who must be loyal to the United States. All U.S. citizens owe allegiance to our country. Treason is the act of betraying your country, and the U.S. Constitution makes this crime punishable by death. People who are born citizens may not think about allegiance as much as those preparing to take the oath, but you can probably remember a time when you've said this word, maybe even this morning or Tuesdays here at St. Peter Middle. Americans often say the Pledge of Allegiance to show loyalty to the United States flag and the nation that it stands for. Love of country. Beyond owing allegiance to the United States, most U.S. citizens feel a deep bond with their country. We call this feeling patriotism. Many citizens get emotional when they hear the national anthem, which is called the Star Spangled Banner. Every 4th of July, Americans celebrate Independence Day. The day the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, when the American colonies, I'm sorry, I lost my spot there, when the American colonies declared their independence from Great Britain. Other national holidays, geez Louise, what's happening here? Where's my box? Other national holidays, such as President's Day and Martin Luther King Day, Honor the lives and sacrifices of very important Americans. Memorial Day and Veterans Day are two national holidays honoring those who have lost their lives or served in the U.S. military, and these can be very emotional for many U.S. citizens. Rights in the United States. The United States is known for the rights and freedoms given to those who live here. The first ten amendments, and amendments means changes, to the U.S. Constitution are called the Bill of Rights. They list important rights that are guaranteed to all people in the United States, not just citizens. These are rights like the freedom of expression, the freedom to worship, assemble peacefully, to petition the government, as well as the right to be free from unreasonable searches by government officials. But some rights are only for U.S. citizens. These rights include the right to vote in federal elections, the right to run for a federal political office, and the right to serve on a jury. Along with these freedoms come some responsibilities. Everyone in the U.S. is responsible for obeying laws. Citizens are also responsible for voting in elections and serving on juries when asked. Yes, they are both rights and responsibilities. 
Male citizens between the ages of 18 and 26 must also register with the Selective Service System. In a time of a national emergency, this agency is authorized to call up the citizens to serve in the armed forces. I'm going to go through our U.S. citizenship timeline here. Make sure I only have one box so we know where exactly I am. In 1776, you must be a white male and own property in order to vote. In 1791, all white males may vote even if they don't own property. In 1795, free white persons will become citizens after living in the U.S. for five years. In 1848... 80,000 Mexican residents of the Southwest are granted citizenship after the Mexican-American War. In 1857, in the Dred Scott case, which is something that we've looked at pretty heavily, in the Dred Scott case, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that African-Americans who were brought into the country as slaves could never be citizens. Back to my box. In 1868, the 14th Amendment overrules the Dred Scott v. Sanford case, which gives citizenship to African Americans. In 1870, the laws changed to say that white persons and persons of African descent can be citizens. In the 15th Amendment, gives African Americans the right to vote. In 1913, several states enact the alien land laws, which prohibit non-citizens from owning property. Let's see if I can make this easier to see. There we go. In 1920, the 19th Amendment allows women the right to vote. 1924, all Native Americans are granted citizenship. In the 1940s, there were laws that banned Asians from becoming citizens, and those laws were overturned. In 1947, Native Americans are given the right to vote. In 1952, the U.S. Congress passes a law that citizenship cannot be denied because of race or gender. In 1965, the U.S. Voting Rights Act gets rid of all barriers to voting, such as taxes and literacy tests, which we talked about a little bit when we were up here looking at Dred Scott. And in 1971, the voting age is lowered from 21 to 18 by the 26th Amendment. And that is our reading, checking out the citizenship, just the facts reading. If I can figure out how to get my focus to disappear, there we go. Perfect.